Hello. In this video, I'm going to work through an example problem on the resonant structures of radicals. Uh, in particular, we're going to look at uh, a radical that has some resonance contributors and figure out how to draw all of the resonance contributors. So if I was interested in trying to draw all of the resonance contributors for this radical that I'm showing here, um, one, one of the first things that I might actually want to make sure that I do is to draw out the carbon skeleton exactly the same way that it's shown in the first structure. Uh, resonance structures do not involve moving of, of atoms around, do not involve changing the sigma bond network in a molecule. The second thing I might want to do is look for allyl radical systems, and I have one uh, in this particular structure, and I've just drawn a square around it. Uh, don't need that extra square there. And if you've, you know, internalized the, the what happens to, to allyl things in resonance, right, that the double bond swaps to the other carbon-carbon bond, and then what's ever at one end swaps to the other, you might be able to use that right away to draw the other radical, or draw the other resonance contributor to this radical. Uh, if you need to draw, res uh, draw arrows to help you keep track of electron movement, you are welcome to do so. Uh, and I encourage you as you are, are learning how to do this. Now, uh, the fact that my heading up here says all, draw all means that maybe after drawing this second resonance contributor, we might not be completely done. So let's look for other allyl systems in this molecule. And in fact, I'm going to draw another box around it. Uh, in this radical here, there's a second allyl system, which means there's a second or a set of resonance arrows that I can draw. And there's one more resonance contributor that I can draw. And notice how as I'm drawing each individual resonance contributor, I am leaving the structure of the rest of the molecule alone. One of the important things to remember in organic chemistry is while you may be doing some kind of resonance or chemical change in one part of the molecule, generally it's contained to that one part of the molecule. Uh, and so it, here are the three resonance contributors. I'm going to make a copy of them and remove all of the arrows and boxes and things so that we can clearly see uh, the three radicals. You might be wondering, right, why doesn't the, oops, I've, I've lost a bond here. I want to get rid of this arrow. I want to get rid of the arrow. There we go. Not the bond. And there's the bond. Right. You might be wondering why that radical doesn't end up on other spots around the ring. Like, why doesn't the radical end up in the three bottom spots around the ring? And the reason is this that these three carbon atoms here on the ring all have two hydrogens. In order for there to be resonance, uh, in order for there to be resonance contribution, you need you know, some sp two hybridization going on, and you're not getting that at, when there are you know four bonds at that carbon. So take a moment and remember that there are two hydrogens in each of these spots, and you can't move hydrogen atoms when you draw resonance structures. In the next video, we're going to use our knowledge of radical stability to help predict where the most stable radical on a structure will form. Thanks for watching.